Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back into what is turning into a bit of an annual event on the channel. It's effectively a list of all electric vehicles, full electric vehicles that are coming out this year, 2021 in the UK. I'm not gonna give you every version of every car, so I will say the Tesla Model 3 as opposed to the Tesla Model 3 standard range and the long range and the performance. So this is every car rather than kind of different battery sizes or something like that. Of course, some of these will be guesstimates as that they're meant to be coming out this year. So some of these are cars that are out now and that will be still out in 2021. Some are cars that are slated to be out. So uh, yeah, right. Now, before we get any further, the channel needs your help. Or rather, I need your help because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the channel. Now I've told you the idea of doing like a Patreon campaign in the future, you know, where you can donate to the channel to help it out, etc, etc. Um, but I haven't. I've relied on a little bit of Google AdWords and a lot of the occasional sponsorship, which is effectively what this is. So what I'm saying is, if you were someone that would be willing to donate two or three pounds to the channel, don't do that. Spend two or three pounds on a BOTB ticket and you might win yourself a car. You'll help the channel out because even though I don't get anything for each person that clicks on that link in the description, I do get them wanting to come back and sponsor a future video. So basically, the more people that do it, the more likely they are to come back. Only rather than giving me two or three pounds, you might end up winning a car, like a Porsche Taycan or something like that anyway. Uh, so yeah, if you can, please do click the link in the description below. It has to be that link, otherwise they won't know you've come from this channel. Now, in what nobody is likely to skip, the contractually obliged text that I now have to read out. And please do listen to it because it gives you all the details. Don't skip it. I can see you doing it. I can see you going to that marker. Massive thanks to BOTB, the dream car competition company, for sponsoring this video. BOTB have had two decades. They've been around a long time and I've used them quite a bit in the past. Uh, two decades of winners and they now give away two cars each week with tickets just starting at 40 pence. Their dream car competition has won over 180 cars that you can choose to play for and every single one now comes with £50,000 of cash in the boot. So you get 50 grand and a car. I mean, come on, it's better than donating to a channel, isn't it? Uh, this includes a large selection of electric vehicles like the Porsche Taycan or the Honda E, little things like that, or a Tesla Model 3 Performance. There's loads of them. You only have to be over 17 to enter and the competition closes at midnight on Sunday, so please get your tickets as soon as possible. And don't forget, you need to use the uh, link in the description below. I will also put it as a pinned comment as well. If you don't do that, they won't know you come from me, and it won't make a difference to this channel anyway. Right, let's get on with the video itself, the, the topic, a list of cars. I've decided to do it in order of price. So we'll go with the cheapest first, down to the most expensive, uh, and it starts with the Smart 4.2, which is a car that's been around quite a long time, to be honest. It's had refreshes, don't get me wrong. And it's just under £19,500. I should point out that all the prices I'm mentioning are list prices, okay? The ranges I'm using are real-world ranges or predicted real-world ranges, not the WLTP range that manufacturers spout out. You've only got a range of about 60, 70 miles, though, so it's a bit of a tough sell, if I'm honest. Uh, it's clearly just going to be a second car or a city car. Next is a new car. It's not quite here yet. It is just a shade under £20,000, at least in the smaller battery version. It is the Fiat 500 electric, the new one. Uh, as I said, just under twenty grand and just under 100 miles range in the smaller battery version. I think as a second car or as a pure city car, it'll be a very good one. I can't tell you what it's about because even though I've emailed them once a month for the past four months, they haven't even bothered to reply to tell me that I'm not suitable or I'm not big enough, which I wouldn't mind at all. I'm, I'm not everybody, everybody's flavour. I'm not big enough for every manufacturer, even though I think they're the only ones that don't actually reply. Uh, so yeah, Fiat don't bother replying to me, the, the PR people anyway, so uh, I can't tell you what it's like. But it doesn't take much to reply to an email, does it? It's just rude. Just over 20 grand now, we have the Smart 4.4. Basically very similar to the previous Smart I mentioned, just with four seats. 
Same sort of range though, so again, it's the same kind of tough sell, just over 60, 70 miles of range. Uh, now, what I would probably go for in terms of small cars, city cars or secondary cars if you want, uh, it's, uh, well, the next two cars are actually basically the same. It's a clone of each other, the Seat Mi Electric and the Volkswagen E-Up. Just under 23 grand and just over 23 and a half for the Volkswagen. I tested the Skoda City Go, which is no longer sold in the UK for some reason. They've pulled the car. Fantastic. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. They really are fantastic cars and they're practically identical to one another. So whether it's the Volkswagen E-Up or the Seat Me Electric, they're just very, very good. And I think as a second or as a city car, perfect. Quite different next, just under 24 and a half thousand pounds, but it's a large car, it's an estate, and it'll do roughly 160, 70 miles in the real world, year round average, the MG5. Now this is a car which I should have already had and it would have been on the channel by now, but unfortunately the pandemic has meant that it got canceled, so it'll be in the near future, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, the MG5, just like the ZS, which will be coming up very soon, in fact, you can't really argue with the value. Next, we have the Mini Electric. For just over 25 grand, which is basically the same price as the petrol version, you're getting a full electric Mini. It's only going to have about 115 miles of real-world range, but, you know, again, as a second car, more, more than enough. Now we're moving on to uh, a practical family-sized SUV, the MGZS EV, of course. 25 and a half grand, although discounts are available if you look, uh, well, not too hard, really. Roughly 140 miles of real-world range. Can't rate this highly enough. It's not the best car in the world, but there is nothing close to that in terms of price and size and practicality in the electric car world. Now, a car I have just received an invite to the launch for, in March anyway, 25 and a half grand ish, only a roughly 110 miles of real world range. It is the Mazda MX 30. Again, they've kind of done what Mini have done. Let's try and get one at a good price and see what how many batteries we can put in there rather than giving it a range and going, wow, we're selling a 30,000 pound small car that's normally 15 in, in petrol car world. So I don't mind manufacturers doing this. I will put uh, the links to any videos, by the way, if you, they'll, they'll appear in, I think, that corner, um, if I've reviewed the car already. So if you want to watch uh, the review for that, and I will also put in the description below, actually, a link to a playlist of all my EV review videos. The E208 is one that I thought, I think is a very good looking car, probably the best looking small hatch for me. Uh, 26, nearly 27,000 pounds, but there are good discounts available on this. I've seen them for about 24 and a half, Roughly 170-ish miles of uh, range, real world, and uh, it's part of the PSA clone, so there'll be a few more coming up very soon. Now we have the Nissan Leaf, the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf. Just under 27 grand list price, 130 odd miles of real world range. This is one that, even though I've had two Leafs and I thought they were fantastic, this is one that I probably wouldn't recommend going for. And I've seen a few high milers, and the batteries ain't in great shape. So if you, if you want one and it's good discount and you're not going to have it out of warranty, fine. I just, I just worry that the fact that the lack of thermal battery management, it's not the rapid charging thing, it's the longevity of the batteries that I worry about with those. Now, another PSA clone similar to the uh, Peugeot 208, the Corsa E. I will be getting this in the next few weeks. Again, lockdown aside, um, just under 27 grand, same range as the Peugeot, pretty much. Uh, but it's the Corsa version of it. I saw two of these for sale, brand new, unregistered, for £22,000. This was back in August. Now we have the best car in terms of pound per mile of range that you can get. It is the Renault Zoe, the 50 kilowatt hour one. Starts at just under 27 grand, but again, a car that comes with a lot of discounts if you uh, look around enough. You will get 200 miles out of these, which for a car which I've seen for just over 25 grand by a uh, just a little bit of Googling, again, you can't really fault it in terms of range, in, you know, per, per mile of range, pound per mile of range, anyway. The Honda E now, a car I thought very, very highly of. It is one of the premium uh, kind of prices, over 27 grand for what is a very small car, tiny boot, but it, I just loved it. It's a ground up EV, it's, it's fantastic. A car now which I thought would slip under the radar, it's effectively similar to the Peugeot E2008 and the DS3 Crossback E-Tense. 
But uh, the Citroen EC4 for me, its unique selling point, and again, you can watch more on the uh, review in the channel, it was just super comfortable and quiet. So I definitely think it's one that's uh, worth a look at. Just over 29 grand list price, but again, you'll get discounts on that. Roughly 170 odd miles of real world range. Now a car that is not out yet, but is due this year, and I'm pretty sure will turn up this year. It is the Skoda Enyaq IV or 4. Meant to be about 30,000 pounds, roughly 200 miles of range. So uh, as far as I know, it's effectively an ID4 clone. Might be really good. Skoda usually do do better value cars. Effectively, a better value Volkswagen. A car that is due a refresh this year, very soon, the Hyundai Kona. Starts at just over 30 grand for the smaller battery version anyway. Very efficient, just like the Kia, which is effectively, again, a clone of the same sort of car. Uh, I, I personally prefer the, e the Kia e Nero over the Kona. It's a bit bigger and more practical, but you can get this in the smaller battery version, as I said. Just over 30 grand, 180, maybe 90 miles of real world range. And now we have effectively a competitor to that, the Peugeot E2008. Starts at 30 and a half ish, slightly less range than the uh, smaller battery corner, uh, but you will get uh, discounts on that as well, as, as you will for most, as I say. So, yeah, I like that. I thought it was a better looking car. The E2008 is the best looking kind of compact SUV, I reckon, on the market. Now we have yet another clone of the PSA group, the Vauxhall Mocha E. It's the 2008, basically. Worst name in the world for me. I don't like that name. I don't know why. Um, sounds like a coffee. But just under 31 grand, same range as the uh, E208, E2008, e 2008 ds 3 effectively the same battery size and motor. So uh, I guess just which one you prefer if you are looking at the PSA group as, uh, as an option for you. Now we have the Nissan Leaf again, but the E Plus version. So this is one that uh, comes with a bigger, bigger 62, I think it is, kilowatt hour battery. Again, I think it is way too expensive for what you get. They've shoe on a massive battery in a space that still has no thermal battery management. I would worry about its longevity. 32 and a half, over 32 and a half thousand pounds. It'll do over 200 miles just in the real world. But something else which has pretty much the same battery size, the E Nero, for example, will do 50 miles more than that. Now we have the, well, I'll, I'll put these together. The Volkswagen ID3, again, a car I should be getting very soon, lockdown pending, and the Cupra Elborn, which is effectively Sayat's version, or Cupra, which is like a sub-brand of Sayat now. Uh, it's, it's an ID3, it just looks different. I think the Elborn looks nicer than the ID3, personally, and Sayat will, or Cupra, should I say, will probably end up doing it slightly cheaper than the equivalent battery-sized Volkswagen ID3. Either way, you're looking at 33, 34,000 pounds, for now, they are coming out in the cheaper versions um, for the ID3 and the L Born. Next, another PSA Group clone in the compact SUV sense, like the 2008 and the Mocha, uh, the DS3 Crossback E Tense. Now, this is effectively pitched, and it's 34 grand starting price. It's effectively the premium version of the PSA Group. It's the Lexus to the Toyota, effectively. We're into just under 35,000 pounds now. The Kia e Nero, a car I nearly bought, and I have to say, is one of my favorite EVs on the road. Well over 250 miles of real world EV range. It, you know, I don't normally go for SUVs, but I really did like this. And as I said, the efficiency for the Kias and Hyundais, which effectively share the same platform, is off the charts. Another Kia is next, although it's more expensive, uh, 37 and a half, the Kia Soul EV. Now this is a car I didn't, I didn't, get on with as well as the e-nero compared to other people on youtube because i just didn't see where it fit it's an e-nero but with the boot chopped off a lot of people look at it as like well i don't need something as big as the e-nero it's the same width it's taller than an e-nero it's just not as long but you lose that in the boot so you've got a relatively impractical boot but the front end is an e-nero in terms of its size it looks very different. It's uh, It's got a brilliant audio system, I should say. It's got a unique look to it, don't get me wrong. There is reasons to get it. I just think if I'm going to spend that amount of money on that car, I would prefer the E-Nero every day. It gives me the practicality as well as the range. Next, the car which has been out a long time, yet is still asking premium money for it for me, and I think it's up well overpriced, but there are discounts available. 
just under 40 grand for a BMW i3. It's, yeah, it's got the carbon fibre chassis, which i3 owners constantly bang on about as being a major bonus. It's no longer a bonus, otherwise BMW would still be doing it. Even BMW say, you don't need to do this any longer for weight saving. It's unique, it still looks cool, and just under 40 grand, is anybody seriously suggesting that's 500 pounds off a Tesla Model 3? But, cracking used buys. I think in the used market, the i3 is the one to look at almost first. Now, we have uh, a car, again, that is slated to come out this year. It is the Ioniq 5. It's effectively uh, like a sub-brand of Hyundai, I believe, that they're starting. Uh, around 40 grand, 260, maybe more miles of range. Uh, again, it should be very efficient if it's anything like the Hyundais and Kias. Uh, and this is it, really. That's not much more I can tell you about. It's uh, meant to be coming out this year. Fingers crossed it does. We have the Mercedes EQA now, about 40 grand, roughly 240, 50 miles a range. Who knows? It's meant to be effectively a compact SUV Mercedes. Well, they're, they're putting more effort into EVs. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this sort of stuff. And again, at the same sort of price bracket, 40 grandish, we've got the Nissan Aria. 260-ish uh, miles of range, way better technology than the Leaf E+. Look at the difference in what you get. It, it's streets ahead, it's light years ahead of what the Leaf is, which is why for me the Leaf, they should just get rid of it. Now, in what is almost identical in terms of pricing, just over 40 grand to the Tesla Model 3, it's the Ford Mustang Mach-E, a car I saw just over a year ago in LA, and I've talked to the engineers, I've played around with it, it was a prototype, but I really, really liked it. I mean, if it was out a year or so earlier than it actually is, I have a standard range Tesla Model 3. I would have seriously looked at the, Mus the Mustang Mach-E, which is basically the same price as the standard range Model 3, if it was out when we bought that car. And now, of course, it's the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Arguably, the best electric vehicle you can buy in the UK today. Not the cheapest, granted, 40 grand is a lot of money, but Teslas have not only a bit of a cool factor for the younger generation anyway, but they have a key advantage over every EV from every other manufacturer, and that is, of course, the supercharger network. Don't get me wrong, as an owner, its build quality needs to change. It really does. Now we have, again, uh, a guesstimation, but about 43-ish grand, 260, apparently, a real-world range miles, uh, the Volkswagen ID4. Effectively, you know, look, we're into Eurobox SUV territory. They're all going for SUVs. I, I, I'm not a fan of SUVs. I prefer a car, uh, an estate over an SUV if you want something practical, but that's what everybody wants. Stop buying SUVs, people. Now, uh, a Lexus, a full electric UX 300e. A car with the worst naming convention in the world, but it's going to be impeccably built, I'm sure. It's a Lexus after all, probably uber reliable, but for nearly 44 grand, only 160 odd miles of range in the real world. It's a bit, a bit much, a bit much, so I'm not sure about that one. I think if you like Lexus, you, can, you know, a lot of people are brand loyal, aren't they? So they might like it, but I, th I just think the range, given what is in that 40 odd grand price bracket, is a little off. Yet another SUV now, the Audi e-tron Q4. 45-ish grand, 230-odd miles of range. Yeah, it, it's another photocopied Audi SUV. Ooh. It will be brilliant, don't get me wrong. Audis are fantastic cars. They just bore me to death, unless they have an RS in front of it. Another Mercedes now. Uh, we have the Mercedes EQB. We've had the a EQA. This is the EQB. And soon I'll be telling you about the EQC and, of course, the EQS. 45-ish grand, 230-odd miles. It's effectively a Q4 equivalent, but from Mercedes. Again, it'll be impeccably built, very comfortable and luxurious and all that sort of stuff. A car which we recently put on the channel just over Christmas, it's a Polestar 2. Not the Polestar I was thinking of when I uh, first heard about it, but even then, it is a very good car. Um, it had its flaws. Again, look at the video in my channel if you want to know what I meant. Bit more expensive at the moment for now anyway, they are, they are bringing out cheaper versions, but 47 grand, I wouldn't say you'd get more than 210, 20 miles of range out of it. A bit of a price jump now, 59 grand nearly, 200 and odd miles of range, 220 say, of real world range. It's the BMW iX3, it's a, a very expensive BMW X3. 
I don't know why they've done it on that. Probably because everyone wants SUVs. Yeah, it's a, it's in a 60 grand BMW X3. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a fan of that. Just under £60,000 now, a car which was the last video that went on the channel actually, in uh, plug-in hybrid form anyway, the Volvo XC40 electric. I thought the FEV, the XC40 as a car anyway, was fantastic. As a family car, I, I, I thought it's brilliant. I've still got it now because the can't pick it up under lockdown. I've had it for nearly a month now and I don't know how long I'll have it for, but I really can't fault it as a family car. However, in full electric version, 170-ish miles of real world range, just under 60 grand. That's the stretch there. It could be just outpricing itself. Now we move on to one of the most boring cars in its price bracket for me. I'm sorry guys, it's the Audi e-tron. I just think it's you know, it starts at 61 and a bit grand. It's a plain SUV with electric. Impeccably built again, really luxurious and comfortable. I just I just there's nothing special about it. And if I'm spending 60 grand, I want something, something unique. It's another Audi SUV, that's all I can think of. Now, a car that's slated to coming out again this year, 65-ish grand, 250-ish miles of uh, uh, range, the Jaguar XJ. I hope this is as good as it should be, and it does definitely come out. I, I, I like Jaguar, I want them to do well. And that moves us to the next car, which is, again, a Jaguar. It's the I-Pace, most people are very familiar with this by now. Starts at just over 65,000 pounds, 220, 30 miles of range, it's had a few improvements recently. Uh, I thought it was really good. It, it felt a bit special. The, the interior was nice, although not the best in its class. Not the most practical. Quick, very quick. It just felt a bit, I don't know, it just had something. Felt a bit special, felt a bit unique. You felt that you were getting 65 grand's worth of car, if not maybe 65 grand's worth of engineering. Now another car we're familiar with, the Mercedes EQC. It's effectively just a petrol engine with batteries shoved in it. Uh, and the petrol engine removed, so I'm not a big fan of this, if I'm being perfectly honest. For 65 and a bit grand, and all the way up, 220, 10 miles of range, I would say 210 miles of rear wheel range. Very luxurious, really well built, fantastic dash display. It just had too many compromises for me. Mercedes could do better than that. Again, watch the review in the channel if you want to know more. Now we have a car which I think is the best electric vehicle in terms of feel and just fun and handling and sportiness, which I am usually a fan of over other genres. The Porsche Taycan, £70,690 it will start from. They're bringing a cheaper rear-wheel drive only version out. Uh, I would say 200-ish miles of range-ish. Uh, it's not the most efficient EV out there. It just felt like you were in something special. And now it's a bit cheaper, 70 grand. Well, put it this way, would you want uh, an EQC for 65 grand or a Porsche Taycan for 70? Although it should be said, you're going to be spending at least 80 on a Taycan, aren't you? Because everything's optional. <laughs> now we're shooting up to nearly £80,000. It's the Audi e-tron Sportback. It's effectively the same as the e-tron. I mean, from the middle forwards, it's an e-tron. I think it's literally identical. Although there are, there are a few engineering changes with the Sportback which make it more efficient. From the back, it's effectively a sportier SUV. So they've kind of taken a, an SUV, which is a practical car, and made it less practical. But it starts at 80 grand. 230 odd miles of rear wheel range, apparently. We'll see, but I, I just don't see it. I just don't see the difference on what is basically the same as an e-tron. I don't know, it, it's a bit of a weird one. It's another Audi photocopier, you know, 50 shades of Audi. Now we get onto a car which is well overdue a refresh, and it's been out a long time. It's the Tesla Model S. A shade under £80,000, but you'll get well over 300 miles of real world range in that. So you can't really beat it in terms of range. Of course, you get the supercharger network as well. And I should point out that as I am filming this right now, there's a lot of noise on the, uh, the internet about the uh, probable refresh coming out. So that might be out by the time you see this video. The price might be different, so it could be all change now. You never know what's going on with Tesla. Uh, another car that's on its way, probably in this year, is the BMW iX. Around 80 grand, 300 odd miles of rear-wheel range apparently. The ugliest front end of any car I've ever seen. Although I've not seen it in the flesh, I just think it's a weird looking car. And for 80,000 pounds, you want something good looking really, don't you? The BMW iX is going to be an immensely engineered car, I'm sure of that. It's probably going to be brilliant as a car. I just think its looks are a bit 
Well, you're never going to put it on your wall, are you? Nearing the end now, still 80 grand, 300 and odd miles of real world range. The Mercedes EQS, apparently maybe 350 miles of real world range, although I'm a bit dubious on that one. I'm not sure about this. I think it will be, again, probably like the BMW, brilliantly engineered. I just can't see the specialness there. It's a car that you probably want to be driven in rather than a car to drive. Uh, one criticism that people have of the next car, the Porsche Taycan, is the practicality of it. Although it was pretty decent boot, if I'm honest. This is the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which is effectively, think of it as the estate version of the Taycan. Starting at 85 grand, 200 and maybe 10-ish miles of real world range, I reckon. So effectively, it's a Taycan with a bigger boot. Now, the car which, if you want in more than five seats, you're probably going to go for an EV world. Uh, it's the Tesla Model X. Again, it's got all the Tesla benefits like the supercharger network or, or pilot, if you, again, if you want that, although it does have its faults, believe me. Uh, 88 grand, just under. 280 odd miles of real world range. Only two cars left now. So, we are starting at £100,000 for this one. It's an Audi and it's the e-tron GT. They are also doing an RS e-tron GT, but this is the, the, the cheaper version, clearly. Uh, effectively, it's Audi's take on the Taycan. It shares it's a lot of its chassis and components, I believe. I've not really looked into it much, but effectively, they've taken the Taycan and Audi-ized it. Now, the last car, which I am dubious as to whether or not it actually will come out for delivery to anybody in 2021, but I thought I'd mention it anyway because it does look cool. And if you looked at it in terms of how much you're paying in pound per mile of range, you're paying... £10,526 per mile of range for this car. It costs £2 million and it's the Lotus Avaya. Hopefully it's as good as it looks. It's a Lotus. I think they're going to basically be putting all their eggs in one basket with this one. So it could be fantastic. It will handle brilliantly, I'm sure of that. I just hope it's built properly and I want Lotus to succeed. I want them to do well. Uh, less than 200 miles of range for £2 million, but let's face it, you're not buying it for range, are you? You're buying it for fun and immense speed. We're pretty much done now. I have done a lot of research on this one. It's taken me bloody ages, but hopefully I've got every car listed here. If I've missed one, put it in the comments and I will add it to the list in the description below. So at least if you are looking at an EV in 2021, you've just got a massive list. Expand the description and they're all there and you can look at them, um, whatever's in your price bracket, basically. As I said earlier, please, if you can, click the link in the description below or the pinned comment, buy a ticket from BOTB. They're more likely to come back and sponsor the channel. So basically, you're helping me out by trying to win a car. If you don't want to, that's fine as well, but that, that's, that's the way I've gone down to fund this channel. Rather than uh, ask for donations, although I'm not saying I won't do that in the future, um, I will uh, try and give you something for it. In this case, £50,000 in a car. I mean, you know, cats are fairer than that, can you? Right, okay, I think we're pretty much done here. It's just a video, lots of talking and lots of lists and lots of pictures of cars, but it always seems to be quite popular. So fingers crossed this one, be, one will be as well. Please do subscribe, it really does help. And then maybe Fiat will respond to me. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, cheers for watching, see you soon.